Hill in the street. When we lived here earlier, this place didn't have paved roads. The front porch has been added. This house was built in 1879, so it's 104 years old. We moved to this house approximately 65 years ago. We said it looked like a colored house. Of course, there were trees here then, and it was real small. A lot has been added since. Anyone going up this way? You want to talk? You got it going? Yeah. This is the side view. This. Playground, mostly football, baseball, and just playing. No grass was able to grow until we grew up and stopped playing. This back end of the house has been added. Approximately 1958, the garage and two rooms upstairs. Where this little porch was not original part of it. This other garage and two rooms upstairs was added in 1948. <laughs> Correction, 1944. Still going. You still running? Yeah. Or right, you might say this up part of the lawn. All this was added was our garden. Okay, we're rolling. Now we're looking from the back of the lot forward. And now we're looking at the area here, which was once the garden. The barn was there. The barn had a pasture, and we kept a cow, which we had to milk twice a day. Who milked it? Charles and I milked it. And when we left, College, they sold the stupid thing. <laughs> Cut it off. Okay, you're now looking at the barn, and as she makes a sweep to the left, you can see the backyard, which used to be the pasture. So, all the fence that the old cow. Cut it off. Now looking at what used to be the barn, which is now most of the storehouse of junk. <laughs> this old barn has been there some uh, 70 or 75 years. Chickens, we had chickens, but they didn't run around here, they ran in the backyard at that time. Mm -hmm. I cut her off. Okay. Okay, this point. area which I'm pointing to was once the garage that housed our car. We had an old Chandler touring car before we had a Chevy. Mm -hmm. And this area where the fish pond is now, we had a, the old wood house that stored the wood, and next to it, the coal house. And this other was the backyard before this other had been added. And it had no grass at all, it was just solid dirt. That's why we used to go out and catch our chickens for supper. Who built the cat here? Charles built the patio, and this is the second fish pond. The other fish pond was down a little further. This second fish pond was went, built when, Lou? About 44? About 1944. How many All the grandchildren have fallen in it at one time or other, some of them more than once.
Yeah, let's go. They said the fish pond looks sort of sad right at the moment because it's low and full of leaves. But this is uh, a spot where the grandchildren had a ball every summer with Jim's leadership cleaning it out. It was always such a joy <laughs> for the kids and such a mess, but great when it was finished. Are there any fish in it? Yeah, they're fish in it. Hold on. But you can't hardly see them. Well, that's, that's two. Come up close, we might get one. You see, that's. He's laying right up there and over there. Oh, okay. And down under these. Him. Can't see him. Look up on the other end. Is any up on the other end? Yeah, so quite a few. Come up here. See? I don't see any big ones. No, you won't see any big ones. Oh, I see them. Why not? They die? This, this area is where the, oh, the original fish pond was, and just below it, was a playhouse which was torn down after everybody was grown. But this playhouse used to be kind of a neighborhood girls and boys club back in the good old days. This room here, the sleeping porch, was added when the front porch was added. And this bathroom was added to the house, so the house originally wasn't very big. Five children, mother and dad, so it had to be enlarged to take care of everybody. Okay. Now this little walkway was built by Charles and I many, many years ago after we quit playing in the front yard. Added a little more beauty to the house. This porch was added when the sleeping porch was added. Made the house look a lot bigger. These steps have been replaced two or three times because the weather kind of takes a toll. This porch, when we were kids, was a used for most anything. We used to have dances over here and we played records. And when radio was in store, we'd have the radio out here. Many a time, good time has had on this porch. Everybody has. Use this swing, you can see it's about as old as we are. Many a, many a grandchild, child, and everybody else was swung in this swing. This other little swing over here was built for the grandchildren. We hadn't been here too long. But when they about were kids, they years. used it. Not over 30 years, anyway. Let's talk about the view out front, what we got across the street now. Well, across the street, when we were growing up, there was a house and a lawn and a garden. And in our neighborhood, there were about three couples that had two boys, and all of us were about the same age. We all took our cows to school with us because the pasture was beyond the school, and we brought them back in the afternoon. So we'd meet in the morning and drive them down the road. Across the street was a house and another house below, but it's commercial now, practically everything around you. One more shot of the backyard, which looks a lot better than it did many, many, many years ago. And when the Charles built this patio here, and you can see the thing in the middle, that used to be a tremendous oak tree, which lended shade to everything, but it Age took its toll and it had to be removed. Right. Now, if you notice where the screen door is, the porch was built from that to the right. Everything else has been added, so this area there was just an open backyard with the driveway approximately where this wall is. So that's been prime our backyard at that time. Ready? Okay. This is Jeanette, the eldest daughter of the Henry and Lily Meadows. And we are now in the front bedroom, which was the only bedroom in the house when we moved over here. Uh, as you can see, this room, the walls and the ceiling, 
These are the original 12-inch uh, boards in here that are hand-planed, and they were left this way uh, purposely because we wanted to leave one room like it was uh, when the house was built some almost 100 years ago. Uh, we would like to, the next thing we want to see is the ancestors of the two families. That is on the right, our grandmother, Blackwell, and on the left is our grandmother, Chandler. And then over on this side, we have the original, or oh, an early picture of mother, Lily Clara Chandler Meadows. Then down on this side, we have the grandfather and grandmother, mothers, Lily's mother and father, Alan Moses Chandler, and his wife, who is, our, who is our grandmother. This room, yes, uh, the pictures are different. This was at a younger time. The, one, the first one we've seen was when she was much older. This room has had a lot of history in it. It started off after the reconstruction of the house as Jeanette's room because I was the oldest daughter in the house and I was sort of isolated up here. And then um, it went from there to, uh, after I went to school, off to school, it was known as the guest room. But going back a little bit, two of the seven children in the family were born in this room. I was the first one. Hey. <laughs> All right, Hazel, what's your name? Hazel. Hazel, <laughs> Hazel what? Hazel Chandler. All right, Hazel, Hazel Chandler. See, that's the family name. And, and then, then there was, oops. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then there was who? <laughs> whoops. All right. And what's your full Skeet. name? Skeet. Lily Jean. Lily Jean Skeet. I have named Skeet because I never could pronounce my name. Oh, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Lily Jean Skeet. Uh, Meadows. What? Atkins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then after that, the first grandchild was born in here, who was Stephen Harrison Fuller, Jr. And uh, he was delivered by our uncle because my doctor was in uh, Chicago at the World's Fair, and Uncle Bethel came from, mother's brother came from Gainesville up here with his, in his big roaring car with his big, uh, dog standing on the running board and it was known as i was told last night a pure <laughs> unassisted birth <laughs> then we go from there to some of the children the children are getting married at this time and this room turned out to be the room when anyone was married and they came home on their honeymoons they were always housed in this room. This was the honeymoon suite for each person as they married. And then they stayed in here a time or two, but then they were delegated to the back room where they undressed back of chairs, and then they went to the sleeping porch, which, as you'll see later, is a wall-to-wall -wall bedroom with four big double beds in it. And they didn't get to stay up in this room too long because there would be another one that was coming in for that. Uh, this room had a fireplace in it, and I can remember so well us sitting in front of this fireplace and eating apples and nuts, and, uh, and of course throwing the hulls into, in, into, the, into the fireplace. This, uh, when anyone was ill, Jerry was real ill at one time, she stayed in this room. Mother was very ill at one time, and she stayed in this room. So this was the room that, when you wanted to get away from somebody else, that's this is the room that was used. Lou and I had our tonsils out at one time and stayed in this room while we were recuperating. Yeah. Had the right. Dr. You know Terrell's anything? office. You know anything else? Yeah, this room has ghosts. I saw a ghost <laughs> in here one night. Sleeping with Jeanette, I saw a ghost, <laughs> and I haven't slept in the room since. A white ghost, all the way to the ceiling. <laughs> Real. Real. It one, moved. It moved. One, one funny thing that happened, I had been to Lake Mott playing with a little band and was supposed to spend the night, but decided to come home. And when I came home, 
because it was in the wee hours of the morning. And uh, these windows go all the way to the floor. So I just pulled the window up and came on in and went to bed. Not too long after that, we had, that was in the day of crank, wind up phones. I heard the phone being cranked in the back hall and daddy was calling the police. And I called him, I says, Daddy? And he came to the door and he was so thoroughly disgusted he thought he had a burglar in the house and it was only me. <laughs> that's enough right now. Okay, that's enough. Did I get it, get it all in? Did I get it all in? Okay. You ready? Okay. This is DeWitt. I'm here to explain these two pictures of mother and dad. They were probably taken this one in the 50s and this one in some, some years later. There's two pictures on the back. There's a little picture here you might be interested in. This is a picture taken of Charles and Lily D at Lily D's wedding. That's good. Okay, we're now recording. Just say that this piece here was given by several members of the family. No real owner as to date. Then you can go on over to the... Uh, well, the picture came from Gillsville. Yeah, the, Put that in there. The picture came from Gillsville, mm -hmm. Alabama, <laughs> Georgia. Georgia. How about Georgia? Okay, now get the door. Okay, look out front door there. Okay, front door. This is the door. Bedroom door. This door shows the paneling in this house, as you can see. Glass door knobs. Probably up to do it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Delete that. It's already on. All right, now go on. Grandfather clock? Sorry. Grandfather clock. I don't know how old that is. Does anybody know how old it is? No. It's about as old as we are, I know. How old are you? It's always been yeah. too old. I can't remember what it was there. Old enough. Old enough. Now where's the door? The door. <laughs> the door. These See. other doors. These doors are six, uh, six and a half feet. Mm. Oh, no. About ten seven feet. Four. Eight. I was going to say eight. No, eight. they're seven, four, seven feet and six ounces, because I measured them. Six, six inches. inches. I measured them once. <laughs> okay, we're looking then, over the couch. And the uh, pictures on the wall. One belongs to the elder daughter, which we won't let her take out yet. <laughs> that was for Charles, is right. Another belongs to Charles, which he picked up in China during the war. There's the famous couch that everybody in the family has lined up for. Right. At Christmas, for pictures. That's right. For years and years. Charles's Bible on the coffee table. Then the famous fireplace where all the stockings, stockings hung, the racks are still there. Get a, get a, get a close up of those hooks, Connie. <laughs> and that picture, where did that picture come from? Who no. knows? Well, let me get the picture. That's still on the hooks. It's been here for uh, days. Whoops. You got all the cracked tiles. <laughs> yes. Fire had many a fire in it before central heating. It's working. I think it's saying there were other drugs. Just as effective, but not as dangerous. Remove a fire in the wash. 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 Remove a fire in Somebody shut the door. Oh, you got the door shut. Open the door. Open the door. Oh, great. We need to get a picture of this. We're on camera right now. Well, <laughs> forget it. Hey, bud. See, we need to Dexter's get. Dexter's are screwing up back there. 
Okay. Here we go. This is the hallway. All right. That's the hallway with duet in the middle of it. The four-inch wainscoting was added when the living room was redone. It is believed that the same hand-hewn lumber is behind the beaver board walls. You want to swing around to the piano now? <laughs> it's all just there. The grand piano, lovely grand piano, is an important feature because Mother, Luella, and Jeanette all were accomplished musicians and played many a fine tune on this piano. The other children all took, but somehow it never took them. The main event in the living room was, of course, Christmas morning when the room was prepared with the ceiling high Christmas tree and all the packages placed below it. And on Christmas morning, we would all line up, march into the living room, the littlest one up to the lot, tallest one, or the oldest one, and then the next Christmas we'd switch around from the tallest, the oldest one, back to the littlest one again. It didn't make any difference to me because I was sitting right in, in the, the middle. middle. <laughs> oh, you don't get them good? No. I said it didn't really make any difference which way you lined up because I was sitting right in the middle. Jerry has a good comment on this house, too, about who built it. We think, we don't know, but we think the Gastons who built a house next door built this house and built a finer house next door. We are not sure of this, but we think this is what took place. But anyway, the house is, what, 105 well, years old? it was built in 1880. 80. They said 1879. 1879. 1879, along about that time. Jerry, and fond husband, James. James. And my fond husband, Jack, on that Jack. Jack. Why don't we stay on the couch? What about the couch? Oh, this couch uh, was bought for Jeanette because she needed a place to sit with her dates. Am I right on that? And it's been in the house ever since. Ever since. And these are former dates. Yes, former dates, of course. And that's going to be my couch. Oh, okay. Number one. The, of interest in this, house, in this room is the molding over the doors and the windows. What is that, four, six-inch molding? That's six-inch molding, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Probably. Fascia. Fascia? Six inches. Is that fascia? Oh, yeah. That's molding. Yeah. What else is there? What else do we need to say about this room? That's good. I think that's it, too, coming. Oh, this is where this little string here is where the tree was attached. So it just has been left hanging there. This completes our tour of the living room. We'll go on now to the dining room. Yeah, you can. Okay. The uh, one of the loveliest rooms in the house, we think, is the dining room. The uh, bay window was added when. Uh, Mother and Daddy remodeled the house originally, giving more space in the dining room, besides adding the additional beauty of the bay window area. About the most we could say about this room is the many um, lovely dinners we've had here with the whole family. And uh, back earlier with the uh, many friends of the college students who, who came to share weekends. And I guess that's about, uh, uh, the ceiling is especially pretty, I think, in this room, uh, besides the uh, doors and frame, which I'm sure you've seen in the earlier portion of this. And I guess that would be uh, about the most we could say about this room, except some funny, funny things that have happened, and Tom can tell us about one, then he's going to pass it. The narrators of this magnificent segment are Lou, Luella Barron's, obviously, one of the in-laws, and then we've got two outlaws, <laughs> Tom Atkins and Speedy Mudder's lovely wife. 
Uh, I've been just been corrected. We just got another magnificent outlaw, <laughs> the the Gulf Baron of North Carolina, James Moncrief. But the two things that I remember more about this room than anything else as an outlaw was my first introduction to a large family dinner, at which time they had a dish which I've since learned to love, mashed sweet taters stuck into orange with sherry. And I took a large mouthful of expecting regular sweet potatoes, and when the sherry hit me, I knew I had been poisoned. <laughs> but I looked carefully around the table and realized that all these fools were eating it, so I ate it too. And now it's one of my favorite dishes. Next. Well, one of the my ha earliest and I think now happiest memories was the Christmas after we had married in November. We came up for the annual Christmas gathering and the Christmas dinner. And as I remember, the table went from there to here, approximately. It was, I still think, as, as I remember, it was one of the most beautifully set tables, if you will, that I have ever seen. The red crystal and the goblets and the white damask and just the whole nine yards. And the meal had been prepared by Aline, who was the standby of the family at that time, and she brought in on a silver platter a large head of steamed cauliflower. And my husband, who has been known to make disparaging remarks from time to time, made the statement, oh my goodness, look at that large fibroid tumor. <laughs> I wasn't real sure how that was going over, but um, he was allowed to stay at the table and has, we've been allowed to come back many times. I'm Jim Moncrief. I have the distinction of being one of those college students who was a friend of the family before he was an outlaw. And the first time I came to this uh, dining room, uh, I put my future wife busy uh, to making biscuit back in the kitchen. There were three college students here visiting uh, Speed, as it was named, known in them, in them days. <laughs> and uh, we ate more biscuits than uh, the law allows. They, they, Jerry thought she was feeding a regiment that night. <laughs> And uh, also, one other comment I want to make about this dining room, which is, uh, I don't know whether this is a fond remembrance or not, but I'm looking up here at this chandelier. There's an awful little finger of gadgets and little balls of glass hanging up there, and I want you to know that I personally have washed, I believe, every one of those things <laughs> hanging up there about twice. Uh, <clears throat> somehow or other, every time we came to Tacor, it seemed to fall out a lot uh, self-assumed lot that we must clean the chandelier and I could never see that it was dirty. <laughs> I just to clarify, I remember that, Jim. <laughs> many times I've had to wash it. That was in addition to cleaning out the fish pond. Right. When Jim was, was called for oh, oh. duty. Does Jack have any comments the middle? Jack Poole, would you come talk to us? Jack, come in, but don't don't bow down. You'll blind the camera. <laughs> no. It's a it's a room of many happy memories. I know that. Myself, yes. Just a room of many ha happy memories. I have no. Uh, I can't think of any other real comment that might be of interest. <laughs> the uh, uh, sideboard, I guess it is known as, uh, is is the, uh, uh, one of the first pieces Mother and Daddy started keeping house with to go with the big table, which Daddy uh, had a big top put on to accommodate the seven kids and Mother and Daddy. And it uh, uh, probably dates back to the early 1900s, if not the late 1800s a beautiful piece of, of furniture and the table that goes with it and the chairs. Does this, does anybody know where that comes You know where no, it came I, from? I said to me, where it uh, the question was asked where that piece of furniture came from and Jerry knows. Well, I'm not sure that I know, but I remember Mother saying to me that this, this uh, she went to a um, auction of her mother's furniture 
and she paid 25 cents for this. Now, Mother has said this, and I see others shaking their heads. It may not be true, but this is what I was told. What I was told. But anyway, I'm, I feel sure that it came from that area, from, from the area around um, Gillsville or Maysville. Well, I'm sure it did come from that area, but I don't believe she paid 25 cents for it. I remember Mother saying it. I could be wrong, but maybe that, that that's true. Okay. Oh, well, the Christmas dinners were the, were the big things in, in here, and many times we have had to use the big table stretched to its full capacity and have had to add other tables and even card tables to accommodate the group. Oh, there'd be more than 25 that would eat in this dining room yeah, at Christmas time. Oh, and, and also, this didn't happen, this didn't, this didn't happen too many times as I remember in recent years, but um, at times, we never had three settings as, as our forefathers did, but uh, we tried to get them all in here, and at times, we have had the big table in here, plus another table, and then many children in the kitchen table, at the kitchen table, but this didn't happen many times, and the kids loved it because they could get up and they could eat it and do as they pleased, and the adults were in here. Being one of the children who ate in the kitchen, I now know why, because the adults would throw food from one end of the table to the other. <laughs> Many times, biscuits would be thrown across the room. That's the way you train young children, take them out of the room. And that's the dining room, All right, this is Jerry, and I, I feel most at home in this room because this is where I've spent a lot of my time. Uh, this is the size of this kitchen is the original size of the kitchen. It didn't look like this back years ago. As a matter of fact, behind the range here is a fireplace where we used to have the wood stove right by it was the wood box which the boys kept filled. Over in the corner to the right of the stove, the wood stove, was a, a kitchen cabinet where we had all the things to make the biscuits and all that stuff with. And between the stove and that kitchen cabinet was a closet. On this side, there was a corresponding closet. That door was not there. This was the entrance to the, to the kitchen. And I don't know the year that this was changed or modified, but I do know that the sink was sitting over on this side where the washer and the dryer is, and I remember distinctly that it was quite low and it would hurt your back when you bent over it. <laughs> and later, in this room has been the hub of activity for the entire family. At times, when you're trying to get a meal together, you have to be real firm and send out people who are not engaged in getting the meal on the table. When there are as many as 25 people here, the duties were we had a roster and we put it over there on the refrigerator so that everybody knew what they were going to do, when they were going to do it. At times, we had some help in the kitchen when the meal was over, as is evidenced by the two men standing by the sink who did the dishes and took care after all the food was done and everybody was eaten, they would help in the kitchen. That's the only time we could come into play. We couldn't get in the kitchen otherwise. Uh, hey, so I think you can hear that. Well, that. That's the only time that some of us could get in this kitchen and uh, take an active part as uh, when the meal was all over, we could at least wash the dishes and dry them. We certainly couldn't get in it when it was into the kitchen when the meal was being prepared. Now, some of us are better dishwashers and dryers than others. I'm a washer. Speed's a dryer. I'm no dryer. I was just a boss. <laughs> what was the I got out of this washing as often as I could. We used to make, on the kitchen cabinet that sat against that wall, we used to make 
pull candy. Remember? Roll it out on that and pull, pull, pull. And the best candy in the world. It has pull out enamel top. And also, uh, it had a great big bin for the flour, another bin for the meal, and then you had a, a roll up front for all the spices and things in the middle. Oh, I can't ever remember Charles DeWitt making breakfast. That ain't so. You were such a kid, you didn't know what was going on at that time. <laughs> Charles and I had our job, was to one to make breakfast, the other bring in the wood and the coal, and milk that stupid cow. The other one cooked breakfast, hot biscuit, cocoa, oatmeal, eggs and bacon, that's right. You made hot biscuits. Many a morning. I have graduated from it. Tell them about sliding on the table. Yeah, you did. We had a fantastic colored woman in here. She was just the greatest thing in the world. And after she'd finished everything, we had a long table that went across the room. She'd sit the two boys on one end of it. She'd pick that table up and let them slide all the way down. That was there. One good thing after lunch was sliding on the table and she'd let them slide just as long as they wanted to. Who was that? Emma. 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 Yeah. Emma. Mm -hmm. Laura. No, oh, Laura, Emma one. I've forgotten which one. Some say Laura, some say Emma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fat back. Yeah. And cornbread. Right. Fat back and cornbread. Fat back that the, and cornbread. The food was cooked with. Yeah. Now, why don't y'all take off and let me get this meal on the table? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good cut off. That's a real good cut off. Okay, we've got the back room. Probably of less historic uh, nature, but uh, certainly one of the most utilitarian uh, areas of the house is this hallway. The uh, hallway was once uh, an extended hallway the length of the house, and there was a wall uh, separating the old hallway from that portion of what is now the living room. This door was, is believed to be the door that went from that original hallway into the, what is now the living room. Uh, the uh, hallway, as you can see, has, uh, some of you've heard before about the 12-inch uh, hand-hewn uh, lumber that's in this uh, building. And you can see them here, they're more pronounced because of the, the uh, cracks in between the, uh, the lumber. As you can see, there's uh, some of Luella's uh, family here now, uh, pictures of Luella's family, you can hallway. It is now uh, taken over the several other uses, as you can see the uh, modern uh, library, telephone. Uh, okay, uh, the, the hallway is we, where we are standing now, of course, has a doorway into the uh, dining room as well as a doorway into the back room. And this hallway, as I said earlier, extends through the house. And you can see now that it goes on out into the back porch, uh, the entranceway, which at the present time happens to be blocked by a chair. Uh, this uh, hall door as you, has a picture here, which is significant to the Meadows family, having two grandchildren of Miss Lillian Henry uh, here on. Louisa Barons, who is, uh, works for an advertising company in Florida, was making up this collage, and she had her sister, Lily D. Barons uh, Campbell, posing as one of the models, and she herself is up here with a sailfish. Unfortunately, you can't see her beautiful face because of the floppy hat. Well, this uh, hallway then, uh, go the, the light uh, that's in here is a red uh, shaded light which we believe uh, came from the Channel home in Maysville. And there's one of the few uh, things that, are, that is in this house that we know of that uh, came from there as an item and as opposed to a picture of uh, one member of the family. 
Well, it goes from here on out to the, uh, the out the into the back room, and the uh, back room is uh, probably the most significant uh, room in the uh, entire house. Uh, more history has taken place here. This is one time has acted as uh, bedrooms for those who were sick. It's uh, the meeting place, the uh, family assembly place for uh, all sorts of uh, conversation and talks. Uh, we think undoubtedly that uh, this room at one time was paneled by the same type uh, lumber that uh, you see throughout the house, but now it's covered with uh, uh, beaver boarding, and undoubtedly, I happen to know personally that it's been uh, painted several times, and it's undoubtedly been painted uh, many times, several times. Uh, this, uh, from the back room, uh, leads into the uh, front bedroom, as you can see, the storage space is there for closets, uh, and a doorway goes, which goes into the front bedroom. And uh, historically, uh, this was the family gathering place uh, in front of the fireplace, which occupied the area right directly back of where the TV now sits. And uh, subsequent to use of its use as a fireplace, uh, it was used with a, a stove of the old pot style sitting out front uh, with a pipe going down through this as a flue. Uh, and uh, many of the kids on occasions have, uh, have uh, coming uh, from the nearby bathroom, uh, getting themselves warmed up a little before going to bed, uh, have uh, had their little bottoms uh, reddened a little bit by that stove pipe that used to be uh, in use right here on that, uh, in that fireplace. Uh, the, uh, you see up above here that there were, at one time, uh, or it still is, about six, uh, big cabin style storage places and those have always been kept full of uh, things and stuff and still is. A, uh, a closet, uh, floor length uh, clothes hanging closet is over on the extreme left and uh, as you can see a dressing table, uh, it's a very attractive uh, room with the windows and, and uh, library uh, storage facilities here. The uh, a very significant corner of this uh, room is over here which uh, used to lead into an area which was a closet area for this room as well as a uh, use for the front room and this closet uh, this closet has some very significant meanings to one member of the family and so I'll now pass it to Hazel and let her say a few words in description of the closet uh, it didn't go into the other room it was just a closet uh, so this room and it was where I spent most of my childhood. Um, what am I doing wrong? Oh, man, leave me alone. Uh, uh, I painted it. It was a punishment place for me. Um, uh, I painted with shoe polish one time, and I think I crawled up, as I remember, and I crawled up on a shelf, a shelf another time and went to sleep, and they forgot about me being in there. But this was, uh, this was uh, as you would call it once before, a jail. Let me describe this grandfather clock the best I can. Uh, we think that it has been in this house for about 40 to 50 years. It was originally in the store of uh, Dr. Meadows, uh, where he uh, was the uh, official uh, regulator of all the watches that belonged to the people who worked on the Southern Railroad. They came in once a week to get their watches uh, checked, and it was checked by this clock. Until such time as uh, Western Union established electronic facilities for regulating time, and it was connected to the uh, central timing facility in Washington, D.C., through the Western Union. But until that time, this clock was the official time regulator that was in use for all the people who worked on Southern Railroad, and Dr. Meadows was the man who made that uh, check. Now, the, uh, yes, he was a watch inspector for the Southern Railroad, among his many other attributes. Now, o over in this corner, I want to point out one thing about, uh, we've talked about the members, the members of the family and some of the outlaws and so on. But here are some of the products of the Meadows, uh, direct Meadows and their outlaws. 
This picture here is a collage of all of the grandchildren of Miss Lily and Henry Meadows. And over in this picture, if you can get it in your, in your picture there, this picture is the great-grandchildren. This picture is the great-grandchildren of uh, Miss Lily and uh, Henry Meadows. Now, there may be other great-grandchildren that have come into existence since this collage was made. I'm not sure of that. Yes, uh, Hazel is uh, one to vouch for that, that there are some others. Uh, two? One. one. One that is not represented in this picture. And that's the young, that's uh, young Mike, uh, Michael. Okay, did you get all that? Now, uh... Let's pass it around, see what people have to say. Huh? Y'all talk. Pass it around. Everybody may comment like you did about something different. Yeah, now, take a talk. Yeah, talk about the... Uh... Let's go back to the fireplace. Uh, uh, and I'd like to correct Jim on one thing. I cannot ever remember a pot-bellied stove in this room. It went from the fireplace to the uh, uh, cold circulating heater. But back to the time when it was just a fireplace we had almost routinely on Sunday night through the winter biscuits that were cooked on the fireplace and melted cheese and daddy always bought the a yate apple by the bushel which he kept in the closet and this would be our dessert which is a beautiful memory I'm sure for every child in the family and we won't forget the many times Miss Lily would make cracked in cornbread in the kitchen, but bring it into this room, which was usually warmer than the kitchen, uh, with with buttermilk or sweet milk and good old cracked in cornbread, and you can't beat it. Oh, Jim has been correct, and I'm going to correct Luella. <laughs> there was a pot-bellied stove in this room. I do not remember. Because I remember distinctly one morning I was changing clothes and I got too close to it. No, it wasn't the pipe. It was the stove. But anyway, they had several different kinds of stoves in this room. But the pot-bellied stove burned wood and coal. And it was a lot hotter than it felt. Of course, he was older than I. He probably remembers things I, don't, I didn't know about. Well, I was old enough to know better, and that's about all. <laughs> Jim, did you mention the, the study table? We had in this room a black leather sofa that sat right along the middle of the room and it led out into a bed that we could use it if we wanted to. Back of that sofa was a table that went all the way to the back, and that was our study table. And we sat around that table to get our lessons at night, and that had to be done every night. As incidentally, we walked to school. Yeah, talk about that. We walked to school, because school's not very far from here. It wasn't then. And we walked home for lunch. <laughs> And then we walked back to school, and as DeWitt has said, they carried the cow to school with them. But one interesting thing about that, we always had vegetables and cornbread and a dessert for lunch, or dinner in the middle of the day. And at the time that we, would, uh, we were coming along then, I had kind of long hair down the back and wore a midi blouse, and Mother wanted me to wear it with a big red bow, tied across with my hair tied up with that. If I, but I wanted to put it up, and if Mother, if I put my hair up that day, we didn't have dessert. Oh, if I had wore it down the back with a red bow, we'd have a good dessert. And don't you think those two boys didn't get on me going to school about that? Yeah, talk about school teachers. Yeah, while you're sitting in here. School teachers. Oh, oh, oh. Did you learn anything? <clears throat> yeah, at, at one time, and I think I was either in the 10th grade or 11th grade, we had two teachers who boarded with us and lived in the front room. They only stayed here one year because it was crowded enough without them. 
And I think they realized tracing back and forth to this bathroom was a little too much because on winter nights they couldn't go outside. <laughs> I think the crowning glow was, blow it was, we, uh, Charles and I used to go hunting a lot and we had brought some rabbits home. Mother had cooked them over there, fried rabbits, they look good with gravy and biscuit and rice. And the teachers were enjoying them and one of us made a boo-boo, we said, boy, these rabbits are good, and with that one of them left the table and didn't come back. <laughs> Don't give me credit. <laughs> well, this is about all we have for the uh, back room and we'll now go into the uh, sleeping porch and get a little description of uh, what you have heard of described earlier as the wall-to-wall -wall bed room. Is it turning? Let's see if it's turning. Okay, you got it. Let's go. You ready? Yeah, go. You're now looking in the sleeping porch, and if you're looking at the ceiling, and you see that light fixture which has been there probably as long as this room has. And if you'll notice the ceiling itself, there's no insulation. The roof is on top. It was a tin roof, and when it rained, it really sounded good in here. And if you'll notice the windows, these windows were never closed except on a real cold day in the winter because there was no heat out here. And when we were growing up, this room housed four double beds, two baby beds. So with a family of seven children and mother and father, you had to have plenty of room. There was also a trundle bed used and a type which could be pulled out if there was any space left. This first bed you're looking at has been here as long as the house, as far as I know. And I imagine it had a few hours of sleep on it over the 65 years. Do you want to get the, you want to get the thing about the bedsteads that they cut off? No. Okay. Yeah, these beds had bedsteads, and they actually all were sawed off. And you can see right here what we're talking about. They came up about this high, but they were all sawed off because they were in the way so much. Now all you do is bump your legs on them. You want to take up just a quick shot in here while you're there? The tub. The tub, particularly. There we go. I got it. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Now you're looking in the bathroom, which has been revitalized. But the main thing you want to look at is this was the original tub in the house. And you can see it sits on legs, and you just don't see many more like it today. I imagine this bathes many, and many, 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 many people. <laughs> That's right. Now you can fade out. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Okay. Okay. This is this was the correction room. This is where we all got punished for anything we did wrong. Mother would sit down. I uh, was a little rock, a little uh, straight chair, cane bottom chair, against the wall over there. She'd sit down on that. We'd lay across her lap when we were not too big, and she'd wail away. We had to go get the switch. And if we were, she was not sitting. A lot of the time, she was. We were standing, and she'd switch with the switch. And I have even gotten it with a shoe. <laughs> Oh, Hazel. <laughs> okay. Well, what about anybody else? We all, well, we all got this. I guess we all got this kind of punishment. Yeah, I'm sure everybody got punished, but I, I remember Charles and I went off in our Sunday clothes and slid down a bank and got muddy, and we were tried to stop by the ice plant and wash him, but of course that red mud wouldn't come out. So <laughs> when we finally got home, we knew we had it. So mother, mother took us, gave us a bath, and brought us right in here in this room and prayed. Okay, I'm Bibi, one of the previously identified outlaws. And this is obviously 
the back area of the house, known as the back porch. The original house was came to this area, this wall right here. And when, during one of the remodelings of the house, I'm not exactly sure which one, it was incorporated and the area that you see back along in here was added. Uh, it's a useful area, as you can tell, because many, many objects are piled on the table. There's a lot of, of moving around going on at this time. During the summer months, the, this was sort of an outdoor, uh, of, well, an extra summer living room. There was a TV over here and a table usually here and this table over here, both of which were used to accommodate the many, many relatives who came and went during the summer months. It was just a delightful place and of course during the winter is used as a storage place for the plants. The, this door opens onto the outside of the house. You've seen the patio and the fish pond in, in a previous film. I don't really know that there's a great deal of significance um, other. Okay. Good, good, okay. You can see from this angle the original dog trot hall that came from the front door to what was the back door over here. The ceiling is original. I've forgotten the architectural terms. It's something about bead. Bead is in it, but I don't know exactly what it is. Tongue no, that's not tongue and groove. Uh -uh. Well, anyway, is it? Okay. It's uh, the tongue and groove um, type of ceiling. And this was the ceiling, or is the ceiling, that is uh, uh, throughout the house. Uh, except in the areas where the other boards and the beaver board have replaced it or have covered it up. It was put over it, yeah, okay. Okay, the corner cabinets on either side uh, house the pantry uh, or are the pantry for the kitchen where all the extra canned goods and all things that we didn't have a spot for in the kitchen are stored. This fan, was put in long before ceiling fans were the rage that they are today. It was taken from a drug store in Newnan, Georgia, the Lee King Drug Store, when they remodeled, I would say, in the 50s. And uh, Speed brought it up here and put it in, and it's mighty helpful and mighty welcome during the hot summer days. As we go out, this way, this I assume was the original back door, but when the addition was made in 44, it was incorporated, and you can tell where you go on up into the addition of, of the two rooms and the bath upstairs, two bedrooms and bath, and goes out into the garage. This area plus, can you can you see that yeah, shot? Can get okay, the all right. Yeah, okay. This this room here was Lily Meadows' gift shop, This that room in this area here. When uh, Dr. Meadows retired, I believe in around 1953, he and Miss Lily opened a little gift shop in this area, and it was in what? operation for about 20 years until Miss Lily broke her hip. And, oh, and this is <laughs> one of those who came late and to the garage sale, and that was all that was left. The ceiling in the shop is very interesting, and um, here again, I'm sure is the original ceiling. This room, as I remember, used to be the laundry room. Mm -hmm. And then when the, the, the decision was made to open the gift shop, all of that was cleared out, and it was just a really, really nice shop. It was one of the landmarks in, uh, in Tacoa, and Jim wants to say something. Yeah, I want to say a word about this upstairs into the uh, what we call the trailer rooms upstairs there. <laughs> this was built in about 1944. Now the reason, as I understand it, that uh, Henry saw fit to build this is simply that the population of the Meadows family was uh, had some evidence of going to undergo an increase. <laughs> and uh, there were two members of the family who had married uh, soldier boys, and the soldier boys uh, 
uh, were soon to be, some of them, uh, well, the soldier boys were soon to become fathers. And so, to the, because of the increasing possibility, the increasing uh, size of the families, they had to have more room in the Meadows household because the soldier boys went off to fight, fight the war. Uh, Jerry, uh, with whom I'm uh, <laughs> moderately acquainted, uh, <laughs> Uh, lived here while uh, and Ann was born in Tacoa, and this was her, uh, their place of residence was up the stairs here. And I didn't see Ann until she was 18 months old. I don't go out to the garage. No. Okay. We got that. Okay. The door going out to the garage, and this is probably the most photographed area of the Meadows household because in every picture we have, in every movie, people forgot to take pictures until we were ready to leave, so everybody rushed out, and we have many, many beautiful scenes of families departing and lots of waving in, from the garage area. And I think that just about wraps up our tour of the, this beautiful house. There are people who would wonder why we are making this film. The big reason is that we're all getting old, we're all forgetful, and there's plenty more to be told which we hope we can get recorded. That is all. We'll see you next time. This is Connie and Nancy, and we're the Technicals True with this fine videotape production. And we are making this to hold on to some of the great memories that our parents have and for future generations. And we have an, an R-rated version of this that has all the jokes in it. Yes, it will have no pictures. It will be on audio cassette. You can get it at your local cassette store. <laughs> we